Our next project is going to be a little ornament um, cushion. I use mine as a pin cushion, um, but it's going to look like this. So there's either a heart one or a shamrock one that you can pick from. Miss Crow will give you directions um, that is in a packet. So you have curved seam directions. And on the next page, it has some information about tripping and clipping seam allowances. Here's your options between heart and shamrock. You can pick whichever one you would like to use. And then there's a grading sheet at the end that you'll have to staple your um, little heart pillow to, to in order to grade it. That'll be a little while yet, and I'll be back tomorrow so we can talk about that. The directions are very straightforward, so hopefully you can get um, this done um, pretty easily. So the first part of the direction says rough cut out the pattern piece. So that's what I did here. Just a real simple rough cut um, around the pattern piece. That way we can get rid of this extra paper and we're not struggling with that. Then you need to pick two six inch squares of either cotton or flannel. I have a bunch of squares available for you to use. If you have ones that you want to bring or ones that you can find in the scrap bin, you can do that. So when we go to start out, we need to take um, two of the six inch squares, lay them right sides together, matching the pattern or design. So if I had these two, these two, let's trade you, these two, I wanna make sure that I can find the right side of the fabric or the, the more pretty, I know that's not put a good English, but the more pretty side, the prettier side, and um, we're gonna lay it right sides together. If you do need to do some matching, do your best to match. It's not the end of the world if it does not match. This is just a practice pillow. In order to do this, remember that we're practicing curved seams. So um, our square pillows obviously had straight seams and corners. We do have some corners on here, but we do have curved seams that is gonna make a huge difference at the end if you're not careful with those curved seams. When you have your pieces together, um, the next thing that you need to do is pin this pattern piece onto the um, fabric. Remember, you always want to, even when you're just pinning a pattern piece on, pin perpendicular. We're going to have to cut on the solid line, which is a marked cutting line. So we want to make sure that our pins are not going across that line because otherwise you will sure or dull your scissors or my scissors if you're using mine, okay? So don't over pin, but you wanna have enough pins to make sure that when you cut, your fabric is not going to be shifting around, okay? Next thing you're gonna do is cut this piece out right on the line. If you find a nice scissors, you should be able to go get the fabric cut decently. What I'm gonna do is stop and grab a different pair of scissors and then um, cut the paper perfectly on the line because we don't, our, we don't want to dull our fabric shears by cutting paper with them. So there are little um, scissors up by the art box that you can use. If you have regular paper cutting scissors we can use those two. Okay, and then you're gonna to continue to cut the fabric out right on the edge of the pattern piece. Okay, I'll be back with the next step. Hey, it's Miss Palm, I'm back again. And now I'm here with a better pair of scissors. Can you see me? Um, so I have my nice fabric scissors all ready to go now, and I am going to cut out my fabric right around the edge of that pattern piece, cutting on the cutting line, which is that solid black line. So then I end up looking like this, okay? Next part of my 
steps are to do some marking. So there's a couple different options when we go to mark fabric. And um, one is to use a marking pen, which is really nice. They're pretty expensive, um, but I'm kind of cheap. So uh, you have to be careful because some of these say permanent, some of them are not, some of them are disappearing. So if you don't work quickly enough, um, all your marks will disappear. So you just have to be careful. But you could use a, a actual fabric marker that's made for marking. They have little um, dressmaker pencils that are water soluble. So if you were to wash your um, project, it, all the markings would go away, which is kind of nice for some projects. Um, we also have what's called just uh, marking chalk. There's a little piece of chalk in here that um, is held by the holder. And if you need to mark a line or something, you can just use the chalk to mark a line on your fabric wherever you might need it. So there's some things that you need to mark on your um, heart piece. And um, I found that the easiest way to, to do the marking on this little heart project is with just a regular Crayola marker. You have to be a little bit careful so you don't go too far into the seam. You don't want to go past the dotted line because then um, you will see the marking um, on your final project. But just to, in order to mark, uh, we want to take one of the pins out and mark any of the things that are labeled on your project. So these are notches. Those are things we're going to be cutting out of the seams. So I'm going to go ahead and mark right where those notches are. This is an opening. I need to leave that open. So when I'm sewing, I'm going to mark that and I'm just going to write a big O in the middle. So I remember what that, that is, what that's for. This straight line is a cutting line and we need to clip that when we're done sewing it. Alrighty. Over here, we need to mark the notches. I'm going to put the pin back in the bottom so that holds straight and then I'm going to pull out the pin from this side and continue to mark around the edges. Getting the notches cut out right where I need them. Okay. Um, so we need to transfer the notches, the solid start and stop line where the opening is, transfer where to pin the ribbon, um, transfer the clipping lines, and then transfer the stitching line. Um, 